about a month or so ago, a guy um, from a company out of China, marketing guy from a company, I can't really pronounce the name, I'll, I'll put it up in text. Uh, he asked me if I'd like to review a couple products from them. They, they're sold on Amazon. And uh, I was kind of curious, I uh, thought maybe people would be interested in because they're basically some of the, the cheaper end stuff you can get off of Amazon as far as a lithium battery goes and a pure sign wave inverter. This is the Chins brand. Um, I've, I've heard of it before. I've actually have some uh, friends that have it and they seem to, to be uh, doing okay with it. Gets pretty decent reviews. This one is a 200 amp hour that goes right now for $5.99. So it's pretty cheap per amp hour. Um, it go, it's about 50 pounds. Handles on the slide and everything. It's very similar to the amp here that I reviewed about a month ago. They all sort of look very similar in their case design and everything like that. But I was more interested in this uh, inverter. It's a 1500 watt pure sign. The brand name on it is Alpha. Alpha. <laughs> anyway, it uh, goes for 199, which isn't a bad price for a pure sign of 1500 uh, watts. So we'll put both of these to the test. I'll take both apart, show you how it's built inside, and we'll do some some demos uh, with the discharge rates and also see what this can run using this battery as a combo. But uh, one of the main reasons I decided to take them up on the offer is I was thinking I might build myself a little a little a power station out of all the bits and pieces I've acquired. So I'd have that and that. Um, I also have a little uh, 20 amp uh, lithium battery charger that you plug in. I also have a spare 40 amp uh, solar controller and I also have a, a battery monitor with a shunt that I actually can set it up so that it uh, has low temperature protection using a relay. So my idea is actually to go and make, put them all together and show you how, how I did it and kind of have a schematic and everything just out of interest for people. Anyway, let's get to uh, testing these things. So it came apart pretty easy, maybe half a, maybe a dozen screws or so. And these two aluminum pieces just were in a clamshell. They're very lightweight. I think that's where they save a bunch of money is on aluminum. They don't really have very heavy duty heat sinks there. Get a couple inside. And it's your pretty standard how they make the, the cheaper end inverters with high frequency versus low frequency. So they don't really handle big uh, input surges as well as the more expensive ones, but do a decent enough job for most people's uh, needs if you're just running TVs and computers and stuff like that. You can see they have three transformers here. So you got your DC coming in, they split it into three different circuits. And then there's some uh, field effect transistors or SCRs on there. Basically, it's just chopping up the DC to make an alternating current. And then it goes through these transformers so they can step up the voltage. Because they have to take the 12 volts and they have to step it up to enough voltage to make the 110 on the AC side. So it gets re-rectified. And then there's a bunch of capacitors over here to smooth it out. And then once again, it gets uh, chopped up into alternating current and fed through a their transformer and out to the AC output. See there there's only two wires to each of those plugs so there's actually no ground connection it's just two so it's like a floating arrangement which once again a lot of these uh, cheaper end uh, inverters do that. See this blue thing looks like a, a pickup for the so it can uh, tell you what the the amperage out is and then they also have voltage because they have on the front here they have volts and amps on the readout so that's how they're accomplishing that anyway and on this end they have a couple uh, pretty good sized nuts they're holding things in place with lock washers and then a couple little fans it's very similar to the, the Motormaster Canadian Tire 3000 watt inverter that I installed just in the summer here. And I've actually been using it for a few months now with good success in the RV. Didn't cost me too much. 
just flip it around, have a look at the other side of that board. There we go. Soldering looks pretty good to me. So, just a very basic inverter, not a lot to go wrong. It won't have the best performance, but uh, should last a while for most people. I set up a little test bed here to test the battery capacity. Uh, you can see it's uh, listed as 200 amp hours or 2560 watt hours. So what I've done is I have a lithium battery charger here and I use that to fully charge the lithium battery so I know that it's topped right up. And then I'm using a battery monitor system here and it tells me the voltage and amperage and then the amp hours remaining. So I set it for 200 amp hours so I can tell if it can do the full 200 amp hours. Right now as a load I have a 600 watt heater plugged in to the inverter, the 1500 watt inverter. So it's kind of a dual test saddle wall so it's going to run you know, multiple hours to drain this battery so it'll give me a good test of this as far as it goes for its longer term drawing a, a heavier load. You can hear the fans. There's those two little fans in there. They are fairly loud but they have been coming on and off as needed to cool so they are temperature controlled which means they don't just run constantly. If you have a lighter load they actually don't run at all. It's only when you're pulling a, a heavier load like this little heater is drawing. And then on this side you can see voltage and current. 108 volts 4.5 amps AC and then the DC voltage is 12.6 so we'll just let that go and see how we how we do right now I've been running for a while here and you can see we're at 61 percent capacity left the voltage at the battery is 12.8 volts so there's a little bit of voltage drop through these leads that I have between the, the battery and the inverter. Actually there you go the fan just quit just to, to let you know the fan does stop even though it's still pulling the same wattage. So like I say it's been coming on and off as it's needed. Okay so we're down to two percent. We've done 195 amp hours so far. Still got a pretty good voltage, 12.2, and still drawing the 569 watts there. Let's see what the inverter says. 110 volts, 4.5 amps, 12.1 volts DC coming in. There we go, 200 amp hours. So it meets its capacity rating. And it's actually still going pretty good. Inverter showing 11.7 volts. Battery monitor showing 11.95, but it's still drawing 565 watts. If I was to turn this down, just fan mode, that voltage would pop up at 12.2, 12.3 on there. So you could probably run a little bit more, but anyway, that that uh, confirms that they actually have the capacity of uh, cells in there that they're uh, quoting. So now that we did a capacity test on it, the battery's depleted, so I thought this was a good time to do a, a good charging test on it. I think the max on it is rated for 100 amps. I don't have enough quite to, to get to 100, but I have enough to put in about pretty close to 72 amps here. I have my two charge controllers, solar charge controllers. It's sunny sunny skies today. Also hooked up my uh, converter charger and got it plugged in simulating me running a generator. Kind of the max I would be putting into this battery when I'm boondocking. So right around 71, 72 amps. We'll let that go. It should take about three hours to fully charge. Just under three hours if I if I keep getting good sun on the panels. And then we'll go in and do some tests with the inverter. Now it's all charged up. Let's do a test of this inverter. First thing people are going to be curious about is whether this is going to be able to run a microwave. A pretty common Sunbeam RV microwave here. I think its max wattage is 1850. But given that this 
doesn't have 120 volt output. I think it just may run it. So let's try a beverage. Also, I'm not sure if the battery is going to be able to run it because it's, I believe it's 100 amp max output, but a lot of times they'll allow a little bit extra for a few minutes. So anyway, we'll just hit beverage one. Seems to be doing it. That battery staying at 12.3. We got 110 volts there. 11.5 amps. We'll just let that go. I think 110 is how long the, the beverage takes here. I haven't heard the fans kick on yet. I guess they are truly a temperature controlled fan. Twenty seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. And she's hot, so it can run the microwave. Good to know. So given that the inverter could run my microwave in the RV, it should be able to run pretty well all the other appliances in there, other than the air conditioner, but I have an Instapot and all kinds of things. But if it can run the microwave, that's sort of the max, max uh, wattage thing I have in there. Everything else will run off of it. So that's good. So I thought maybe we'll do a little torture test here. I have a 1500 watt heater. I'll fire it up and we'll just see how long things will run for. Now this battery, like I say, is rated only at 100 amps, so I, it should shut down after a certain amount of times. A lot of times they'll let them run a little higher uh, amperage for, you know, a few minutes, but uh, continuous, they're not rated for higher than 100 amps. Anyway, let's get to the test. I'll just record it on my phone here so we can see the voltage and current. We're on to low heat first. That's pulling about 60, 66, 72 amps there, 74. Inverter's handling it fine. So let's go up to uh, high heat. And we got 124, 127, 129, 130, 132 amps. This seems to be handling it. Staying at 12 volt there. And that is staying at 12. Battery's handling it pretty easily. So it's pulling 1,475 watts. 116 amps. Seems to handle it no, no issues. Hasn't shut off or anything. Inverter's handling it fine. Showing 12.1. There is a bit of voltage drop on these uh, cables and these connectors. I really don't like these connectors right here. Um, they're just hand tightened. They're plastic. So it does compress the lock washer there. But uh, I think if this, if I kept this, I'd go with a bolt versus, versus these things. They're just meant for hooking up very quickly for people. And then I also have the shunt there with its connectors so a little bit of wire loss going on there that's why this is reporting 12.1 volts but the battery is at 12.69 volts that's where people get into trouble when they're installing uh, inverters and battery systems they'll hook their battery up somewhere and they'll have their inverter too far away say they have it like 10 feet away and they're just using smaller gauge cables well the, the voltage drop is so high that the voltage would be fine at the battery, but by the time it gets to the inverter, it might be down to like 11 and a half, 11.4 volts. A lot of times it'll, on a high, a high load like this, it will 
cause the inverter to kick off in low voltage shutdown. People think, oh, it's a crummy inverter or a crappy battery, but actually it's their wire run. And also any one of these connections, if it's not done up really tight, you can get, uh, it starts to run hot and you get a lot of voltage drop over it. And of course, I don't have any fusing in here. If this was hooked in, you'd want to have some safety fusing. But just a test for me right now. So that seems to be running it. No issues there. Interesting. go. Fans came on. So ran that for a good six minutes. I don't want to overdo it because I am above what the battery is rated for but just as a test I wanted to make sure it is capable of putting out the amperage that, that the battery is rated for. And this thing I just wanted to test it, make sure it could sit there and put out a consistent uh, 1500 watts. So next what I'm going to do is I've already taken that apart and showed you the inside. Now that I've completed what I want to as far as testing this battery, I'm going to peel it all apart and we'll have a good look inside see how it's built. got her apart so the lid's just glued in place there. Battery's actually a lot smaller than the case. It's all wrapped in this blue plastic and then they've glued in some uh, foam all around it to keep it in place. I did notice here, now that wasn't me with my thing, this is actually was crushed flat if you can see that wire. So they somehow got it caught in between there when they put the lid on. Anyway, it's just bolted up here. These are five gauge? So it's one big one, looks like, uh, oh, six, six AWG. One big long red one, and then we got two smaller eight gauge wires there. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can get this block out of this case. I have a feeling that maybe it's glued on the bottom. Let's see. Got her out of the case there. So they put on some black goop. Supposed to be glued to the bottom. It actually didn't work out very well. It was pretty easy to get it off. Anyway, it smells really bad in there. I'm glad I'm doing it outside all that goop. So it looks like I'm going to have to uh, cut this blue wrapping off so we can kind of get in there and see how it's put together. Okay, so it wasn't too hard to get those uh, wrappings off. <clears throat> there we be. Got eight cells in there. And there's the BMS board right there on the side. Looks like it's got some numbers there. I'm going to have to take that uh, piece of foam off. And I'll also have a look at the cell numbers, see if we can look them up, see exactly what they are. Bus bars aren't laser welded or anything. They're they're just uh, have nuts holding them on or bolts holding them on. So it'd be easy to change a cell if you needed to. If you had a bad cell. So I went online and looked up the cells on a, a lithium cell decoder site, 
and they came back as Gang Fen 100 amp hours made in May 2022. So they look like pretty decent cells. I don't see any problems with them at all. The BMS, I couldn't find much information. There's some Chinese writing, but it says 100A. So judging by the look of it, it's not very beefy or anything. So it is probably a, a 100 amp BMS. So it's uh, a little low for a battery that's at 200 amp hours. Um, I think if you were going to want to use these to run microwaves and stuff like that in your RV, you'd want to have two of them in parallel so you could have a 200 amp capacity. Even though I was able to run the microwave with it, I wouldn't want to do it. Also, they don't have very uh, much uh, gauge on their wiring, especially the positive here is just a, a big, long six gauge wire anyway i was kind of looking for uh, temperature sensors and i found this black output here looks like there is one right here that maybe reads the bms temperature and then we go along here and there is a sensor right there one of those little black ones that they usually use for low temperature maybe i'll do a test with some ice water and see if it changes in resistance at all I've dipped it in some ice water here, and the sensor's risen up to pretty close to 25,000 ohms. Just pull it out and warm it up with my hand, and you can see it dropping back down again. So definitely it would be able to uh, sense the temperature. Whether or not it has low temperature protection, I'm just not entirely sure because they don't have it anywhere in their specs online, whether it does or not. So. I'd be a little leery of uh, testing it, worried about ruining the cells or something. But anyway, I thought I'd let you know, and I'll see if I can find out any more information. And you can see it's down to 15k there. Okay, so both these items seem to work pretty good, especially considering the price. But uh, they do have some pros and cons, so I've written down my pros and cons list and I'll go through them for you. Um, let's start with the Alpha 1500 watt inverter. Uh, pros, inexpensive at 199 is a pretty decent price for a pure sign of that wattage. Uh, it can power a microwave, prove that with my microwave so that's a good point for it. Uh, the inside, the build quality was pretty decent, components look pretty good. Um, Temperature controlled fans, I liked that, um, that they didn't run all the time, they just came on as needed. Uh, also has the amp and volt readouts. Uh, cons, I don't really like those uh, connectors with the plastic nuts, although that's easily remedied just by your own nuts. Uh, the fans, when they do come on, are quite loud. Uh, there's no remote function at all to turn it on and off. Uh, it uh, has a what they call a floating neutral output, no no uh, ground to it. Um, usually that won't be a problem, but in some setups it could be. And the aluminum case really is just for looks. It doesn't seem to have any functionality other than a little bit of heat transfer, but um, it's it, the aluminum heat sinks are actually on the inside of it. Uh, let's move on to the Chins battery, the 200 amp hour battery. Pros are uh, it seems to use some pretty good uh, lithium cells in there. Uh, the Gang, Ganfen cells are usually pretty good. And the, for my tests, they do have the capacity they're rated for. Uh, it is inexpensive, uh, going, I think it was like $5.99 on Amazon when I checked. Uh, it may or may not have low temperature protect. I'm pretty well certain it does. It has a little NTC thermistor in there. And usually they have that for low temperature protection. Um, I did get in touch with the guy and uh, he did have a reply to me about the protection. And it appears he believes it is and some other YouTuber had tested it. So um, your mileage may vary from that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, consider it low to be 100% sure and use it because you could damage your lithium cells if it doesn't do that. Uh, cons... Pretty cheap BMS in there, only 100 amps, rated for 100 amps continuous output. I really feel it should be a 200 amp 
and they do have ones that are 200 amp and of course they're more expensive so you know you get what you pay for the warranty on these is quite short um, I kind of had a look at their website and they kind of have a 90 day kind of return refund policy and then kind of a one year warranty um, then after that it's just basically for five years we're willing to help you with tech support kind of thing so that is an awfully short warranty uh, there's also no Bluetooth function so Bluetooth is usually pretty nice to have so you can check capacity and stuff like that and kind of inside had a cheap construction you know just taped together and glued together but you know again what you would expect if you're not paying the full rate for a really premium um, battery well there you go there's uh, some tests and demos and what's inside these items and basically my review of them stay tuned in the future i'm going to use these two items and some other things i have kicking around from previous reviews and stuff and i'm going to put together a a boondocking power center and wire it up and show you how it how it performs see what we can get on the cheap end of stuff if we're putting together a bunch of cheap products to uh, kind of put together a boondocking system till next time ray from love your rv cheers guys